Newcastle Fans TV. Hello and welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. This is a little update in regards to Dan Ashworth. Now, it seems like it was such a long time ago, Lee, that we knew that Brighton had accepted his resignation, so he was put on gardening leave for nine months, which seems like a long, long time. Got a tree. His garden will look absolutely I about to say he's got a tree going on outside. He must be stuck in B&Q or something like that, or home base, one of them. No, a man like Ashworth loses his local y -Vale. Brighton will be a bit peeved off that they've lost, effectively, their DNA, because that's what he's been brought in to do, change the club around, and they have got some brilliant astute buys and they play nice football. And I just think that Brighton don't want to release him, so they'll hold on, hold on, hold on. And they must be asking far too much compensation for Newcastle to pay it. Do we really need to be holding on for Dan Nashworth, though? Like, surely we can just, like a, like a chance of signing, if that person's not available, can we just not move on to the next person? I think or is he is that deal. No, I'm sure he's probably available, but do we need to hang on this long? Because this has an impact on our transfer window, right? Well, if you look at January, we had to bring in, who was it, Nick Hammond, to try and get the deals done? Because Dan Ashworth was wasn't done. It was just Murdad, wasn't it? Who did a cracking job, by the way. But you want something more long term, something more permanent. Which Ooh, there's other people available, right? Like, if if is this is he like the only person that's available in England or that Les back? No, it, well, maybe get the, get the band back. No, but, I was going to say something. But, but um, no, it's very much a, what very about much that, that conversation? What about the guy that was really highly sought after, named oh, gosh. Dan Ashworth? No, not Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. And just before, just while you're trying to remember that name, if Dan Ashworth is the best in his field, yeah. but, but is he the best? I thought the guy from is it Monaco? Is it not Monaco? No, you, no, no, no. It, it's been a while now that Dan Ashworth is the guy they've they've nailed the colours to the mast to. So the problem I had with it, not the problem, but like the 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 compensation package was five million. Now you pay that. Like that for, for a player, but when it comes to spending that kind of money on facilities or non playing staff, that seems to dragging our heels, yeah. And it does, and it's not just Newcastle, that's the wider footballing world. But Dan Ashworth is the man. If you go on um, social media or YouTube or whatever, you'll find the clip where he's talking to Jake Humphrey on BT about how he goes about his things and football in general. And why. It, it, is he, the be is he the best in, in this field? Time will tell, won't it? Well, it's, his CV tells it that he's very, very highly regarded. It can't be any worse than Lee Charnley. That's, a, that's no competition, surely. No, exactly. So we're going to actually have a proper, whether you call them sporting directors, technical directors, director of footballs, we're actually going to have someone, a professional. General manager if you're abroad. A, a proper professional doing that job instead of Lee Charnley who's just doing everything badly what are the benefits about having Dan Ashworth 40 why no, me, I'm still trying to remember the guy that I'm trying to remember <laughs> <laughs> Lee what's his vision <laughs> I'll be back I'm going to find his name he's going to bug me keep going he's kind of cool. Lee what, what is the what do you think Dan Ashworth's vision of Newcastle United is and what do you think it should be I think it's also what the what the owners want from it look at his CV he was at Peterborough and I know people are going to shoot me down by the head they brought in the likes of through the academy St Ledger Simon Davis, Matthew Etherton, for that club that low down, they were bringing through youth talent. And then they went on to other things. Look at what he did to England. Look what he did to the women's side. The women's side finished third in the World Cup and now the contenders, every tournament they were going into the one recently there, the She, she Believes Cup, which has been renamed. So, and you look at the youth setups, Freddie Woodman's one of them. The one World Cups, we won Euros. His DNA's footprint on everything and then and look at Brighton, the, the buys that they're getting, they're finding players that are like three, four, five millions, which could sell on to 20 millions, 30 millions, 40s in love of Cucciarella. He's just one of them. There's loads that you can name. They were a League One, League Two team, weren't they? Back, um, when, back when we were lads. They were, they were, they were, they were nowhere. The with Dean. Mm, yeah. Bobby Zamora up top. Yeah, yeah. Now look at them. They're an established Premier League outfit. So it's an amazing job he's done. Now it's time you'd like to think that he takes his skill set to the next level, which is where we aspire to be. This is his biggest test, Sam, isn't it? Of course it is. Because it's a massive, massive rebuilding job. Someone like him in his stage of his career needs that. How many England players now, young England players, do we have? We've got tons. Absolutely loads coming through now, where they're all like 20, 25. 
literally ready for that Gareth Southgate for that next tournament, the next tournament after that. And now we've got a final, we've got semi-finals and that, but that's because of his footprint that he works really hard on. For his, um, here we go. Yeah, we got, who was it? Lewis Campos. Is that the guy? All that for Lewis Campos. No. I, bet I need to Google him now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure when we first got taken over, he was the name that was ringing bells around. Like he turned Monaco into, you know, the team that they are now in terms of who, the names that they brought through, like the Mbappe's and da da da. And all the Silvers. There you go. Like so yeah. But you, but, but you look, you look at what Newcastle United women now are getting taken over, not from the foundation. The club are having it back. Again, that's another footprint that he wants the whole. I think he'll manage the club from mixing in, like you give him the title, whatever title you want to give him, general manager, sport director, whatever it is. He'll manage the the sporting side, whereas I think Steve Lee, Mia Dad, will manage the business side. And obviously, um, I would so, like to see the youth setup sorted out for once and for all in terms of cherry picking the best youth. Not just in and around the northeast, but just like be the first to be like, okay, this is a prospect. Cool, he's with us now. Because mm. again, that's just bugged me for years upon years. Like, why have we left lost out on so many gems? Yeah. Chelsea years? should not be having a base in the northeast. That's disgusting. It's crazy, isn't it? And even even why in is the Bobby North, Clark on Liverpool? Even yeah. in the northeast, we don't dominate in terms of like the best players. Because again, Sunderland do better than us. Millers would do better than us. The thing is as well. You look at the two big Glasgow clubs to Leeds, there's only us really in terms of like a Premier League big name. Southern Mills are in the Championship now. So if they want to be coming anywhere, especially with this new investment and such a good feel factor at the club at the minute, they've got to be thinking, Sam, we want to be coming to Newcastle. Yeah, and that, again, that, as you were saying about the women, that's, that's a big thing as well. Um, before they'd ha they had to go to Sunderland to get any sort of competitive football. But it takes time. But this is these are the things now that will sort them out to make us into a proper football club, not just run on a skeleton staff like a, a cheap, tacky sports warehouse brand clothing, tacky shite, so, red so and blue crap. Isn't it? It's like, turning it us into a proper football club. But in terms and of everything that comes through it, with the commercial it, side as well. Mm. In terms of his job role, like what what would be his quick wins? Because that for me would be. Yeah, sort the youth set up. Uh, obviously, we've got to sort out the, the first team 11 as well, but again, sort out the future because the future is going to be turned around very quickly into and the first team. The thing is, he's going to be part of the team to do that, not just him on his own. Yeah, of course. Like Lee Charnley, just him on his own having to do any, every, anything and everything. Amanda and Mirdad are going to be involved in the day to day. They're the go between between the, you know, the 80% of the consortium. To actually making things happen on the ground, and they will use his knowledge, his experience, his guidance to make it the best it can possibly be. And I'm looking forward to having someone there or a team there that can spot players for the future. In terms of like, I always like you have to look at Man City in terms of how they do things. Like when a, when you know like a striker's going out the door, they've already got their placement lined up two season in advance. Like you already knew Haaland was going there. Like, let's face it, like when Aguero went, Haaland's the next heir to the throne. That's how, how far in advance like, I like to be planning. Not, oh, we need to be rushing around for a striker who's ready. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. The, thing, the thing is with Man City as well, you talked about them. Although they don't bring loads of kids through, the two kids that are coming through, Phil Foden and Cole Palmer, Palmer potentially, those two lads are not just your average Longstaffs or your average Paul Dummett. These two are potentially world class mm -hmm. and they're not just that's because it goes all the way back to the tr training facilities the better courses that you've set up better diet and etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's what needs to be brought in at the club Middlesbrough are the best northeast club yeah. for youth set up and that's a joke easily they bring out loads every year two or three players consistently every year yes they might not meet the Premier League but they can live off that when they sell them on yeah do you know what I'm saying thing right. is as well though it's been like that at Newcastle since long before Mike Ashley as well I've actually got a story on Dan Ashworth. When I was at, I was working at um, Wembley for a summer, and Dan Ashworth actually came to the people that were in the offices. And this is after the 2014 World Cup, where it was at an all-time low with England. It really, really was. And he basically showed on a presentation his vision. And this is just to people that work at Wembley. This isn't like to, you know, people. Like, this is people that actually have an interest in football, yeah, but they're not like going to make a massive difference. And he was just showing things like when he was at West Brom 
all the kids would play the same way as the under 18s, as the under 16s, as the 23s and the first team. They had a, they had a plan, they had a structure, they had an idea that they were going to go with and what they were going to believe with. And if plan A didn't work, they would still stick with plan A and make it better and try and make it better in the future. And he, he did that to an extent in England before he left to go to Brighton. But in no. terms of, you look at the likes of Aston Villa, have already made two big signings potentially. Aston Villa finished a couple of DNA. Months. We do, that is the big thing we're missing, massive DNA. And I mean, you, you look at clubs around Barcelona, adopted the Dutch model, and stick to it. You look at all of the Dutch sides, it's always 4 3 3. They stick to it, they believe in it, and look at Ajax, all the kids that they just, how can one club just pull in so many world class talent year after year? It's mad. I know it's, it's a big city, Amsterdam, what have you but they're consistently proven and they're developing players for Holland. Look at Botman, he's one of them that we're after. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating, really, really fascinating. Get your thoughts on Dan Ashworth. Like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV and we'll see you all very soon.